Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and in this video I'll be making a noise oscillator based upon the ones in the original Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, if you've ever played Nintendo before, these are the sort of sounds that are used for like the car crashes and Rad Racer or gunshots and other sounds, sound effects and all sorts of different games. So it's going to sound a little something like this, but it's a pretty variable oscillator. You can get a lot of different types of sounds out of it. Alright, so this is a simple model that's based upon the Nintendo Noise Oscillators and um, I'll show you how to make it in this video and next time I'll show you how we can dial it in a little bit more and have it act um, pretty much exactly like the Nintendo Noise Oscillators do. So let's start from a new project and the way that the Nintendo algorithm works is a little strange because of the limitations of the hardware that they were using at the time. So the original circuit stores a value and when it receives a pulse from a clock oscillator it changes that value and stores the new value. So in order to do this, I'm going to use a clock oscillator in the oscillator menu. And we're going to control the frequency using a note pitch module. And this is one way that we're going to differ from the original Nintendo stuff is that our frequencies are going to be uh, different than the original circuit, but next time I'll show you how we can um, pretty easily match the Nintendo's tuning for most of the settings anyway. Alright, so we're going to translate the pitch to a frequency using an exponential F module. And we'll restart the oscillator on a new gate and we'll give it an amplitude of 1. Uh, next up, the output here is going to output two values for each frequency period. So it's going to turn to one at the beginning of the period, and then it's going to drop down to zero. And we're going to get events for both of those, but we really only want the on events. So I'm going to use a separator, and we'll use the high output to separate all of the events that are equal to zero. And as I said before, the Nintendo hardware uses the clock output to modify an existing stored value. So I'm going to use the output of the separator to trigger a value module. And I'm going to create a macro that we're going to use to modify our stored value. But before we do that, um, we need to set our stored value to an initial state when we receive a new gate. And what this is just going to do is make sure that our stored value is not equal to zero because if it is, the whole algorithm will not work. So I'm just going to set it to one. I'm going to use a merge module and a separator. Um, and we're using the merge because we're also going to set the uh, value module using the output of the macro that we just created. And by the way, if you want more information about this algorithm, this is a linear feedback shift register. And this macro I'm going to use to calculate the feedback in that equation. And what we're going to do is take our original stored value, um, divide it by 2, and if we use the div output of the modulo module, then it drops all remainers. So we're not going to get any decimals, it's going to tell us how many 2's are uh, in our stored value. 
and then we'll add our calculated feedback to our value that's been divided by 2 and store that in our value module. So we're going to start with a value of 1. We're going to calculate the feedback, um, divide the 1 by 2, which is actually going to give us an output of 0. And then the feedback is going to get added to our value of 0 and stored back into the value module um, where it will stay until we receive another input from the clock pulse. All right, so let's stop for a moment and talk about integers. Integers are a computer's way of storing whole numbers with no decimals or fractional values. And the way that they work, um, so let's say that we have an 8-bit uh, integer. So that has 8 values that are either equal to 0 or 1. And the first one, um, each one tells you uh, whether or not to add a certain value to the overall integer. So, for example, the first bit tells you whether or not to add uh, 0 or 1. And the second bit tells you whether or not to add a 0 or a 2. And the third bit tells you whether or not to add a 0 or a 4. Um, the next one tells you whether or not to add an 8. And using this algorithm, you can uh, with an 8-bit integer, store any value from 0 to 255. So the Nintendo uses an integer, and it's going to compare two of these bits against each other to calculate the feedback. So we're going to calculate the value of two of the bits that are stored in our number. And to do this, we can use the modulo module. You could, um, by the way, do this much easier in core, but I wanted to keep this whole algorithm in primary for those of you who aren't familiar with core. So to check the first bit, we can simply modulo our number by 2. And the mod output, if it's equal to 0, tells us that the original number was even. And if it's 1, it tells us that the original number was odd. Um, and we can use a similar tactic to find the other bits. So what we're going to do is we'll take the original input and we're going to modulo it against a power of 2. So our integers are made up of um, powers of 2 added together. So we want to make a power module with x equal to 2 and we'll create a knob for y and this knob will tell us which other um, bit to check. And we want to start with bit 1 as the minimum. Um, we're already checking bit 0, which is 2 to the 0th power, which equals 1. Um, so that's the mod 2 that we already created, is checking for that bit. All right, so once we have the output of this modulo, um, we can modulo the output of that by 2, and it will tell us um, whether or not a given bit is on. So this um, is a kind of strange algorithm. Don't worry if you don't understand it. It's, uh, like I said, it's much easier to uh, accomplish this in core where we have dedicated uh, modules to check specific bits for us. We don't have to muck about doing strange math. So next thing we're going to do is take the outputs of our two bits that we've just calculated, and we're going to use a logic XOR module. What the XOR module does is it outputs a 1 if one of the incoming outputs is equal to 1. If both of the input coming outputs are equal to 1, it outputs a 0. If they're both equal to 0, it also outputs a 0. So it only outputs a 1 if one of these values is equal to 1. Um, and so if one of our chosen bits is on, then we're going to multiply our output of 1 by the value to add. I'm going to use 16,384. And um, that's 2 to the 14th power, by the way. Um, so it's the 14th bit in a uh, 
integer. I guess it would actually be the 15th number because, again, we're using 2 to the 0. So our stored value here is a 15-bit number, which means it's going to have a value between 0 and uh, 32,767. So our typical digital audio signal needs to be within the ranges from negative 1 to 1. So I just want to translate our um, really huge numbers here into something that won't destroy our speakers. So what I'm going to do is take this value and divide it by 16,384. Um, so that's going to give us an output in the range from 0 to 2, and then we can subtract 1 from that and we'll be within the uh, acceptable negative 1 to 1 range for digital audio. Alright, so the last thing I'm going to do is just add a simple AR envelope to this so it's not constantly spitting out sound and only make noise when you're actually pressing a note. Um, so I know this topic is kind of confusing when you first get into it. If you're interested in looking into it a bit more, I'd suggest uh, googling phrases such as how computers store integers, 2-bit uh, math, bit operators, or a linear feedback shift register, all of which should give you uh, a good deal of information about how these sort of operations work. All right, so we can connect this to our output and give it a shot. All right, so once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com doing a four-part series on emulating the original Nintendo Entertainment System this month. Um, next time will be part two of the noise registers, and I'll show you how we can clean up the tuning and um, maybe refine our method a little bit so we're not sending an event stream into the audio output which is kind of what we're doing in this video.